Good morning, Destiny Travelers. I am Sherry Downs. I am an author, a coach, a spiritual mother, a mentor, a coach, a conference host, um, and a speaker. I um, am just excited today for what the Lord has given me to share with you. All of those destiny travelers, while you're en route to purpose, I want to empower you um, to keep in step with the Holy Spirit and to keep in step with your journey. Take a moment to share this broadcast, share this live feed with your networks and with your friends, with your followers, with your family. I really want to give what God has given me today. And the title of today's message is, who is my family? Type that in the comments. Who is my family? This is going to be so, so good. You really want to share this with somebody else because I feel the weight of the the Lord on this message this morning that he has given me. So go ahead, send it to somebody's inbox, share it to a group, share it to your timeline, invite somebody on. Type in the comments, who is my family? I want to share with you some prophetic messages that the Lord has given me and he empowered me to write them. And the first book is Don't Be Bullied by the Devil, Take Authority and Fight Back. You can find this book on uh, Amazon, Target, Barnes and Noble, wherever books are sold. You can go on my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com and purchase Don't Be Bullied by the Devil. And the second message that the Lord prophetically had given me to write is, Keys to unprecedented praying power. I believe as a body of believers, we have to know, one, how to wage spiritual warfare. And we have to know our power comes in the secret place. Our power comes from having that divine fellowship with the Lord in prayer. And if you don't know how to strategically position yourself before the throne of God in prayer, there are many things in the kingdom of God that you'll begin to miss. So this is book number two, also can be found, Amazon, Target, Barnes and Noble, wherever books are sold. And the third prophetic message that the Lord gave me is Righteous Relationship Reset. And this book has everything to do with the covenant that we have with God and the covenant that we have with our spouses and how to walk in marriage, doing it in God's ordained order and God's ordained plan, his initial design. There are so many dictates that we receive from the world and so many dictates that we receive from culture where we miss God's intended plan and God's intended purpose. So I want to empower you to go to my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com and purchase those prophetic writings that the Lord has himself downloaded to me. I also want to invite you to April 28th and 29th to Hyatt Deerfield, Illinois, to Women of Weight Conference. This conference is a movement that God birthed through me to gather women who desire to fulfill their destiny, women who desire to be the original design that God created them to be before the foundations of the world. And he has Call me to mother, spiritually mother and mentor and come alongside women for the purposes of the kingdom. So now that we have done all of that, let's get to the meat of why we're on here. Um, The Lord has ordered me or empowered me to just propel others to their destiny. And the title, While en Route, Empowerment is because we're all on a journey. And what we want to do with these Facebook lives is to empower destiny travelers, those who want to fulfill their assignment here on earth, those who want to be the original design in which God created them, 
created them to be. So who is my family? Type that in the comments. Who is my family? The Lord began to just really um, empower me with this and let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love. It is for your mercies that we are not consumed. Father, we honor you. We honor the voice of Holy Spirit on this live today. We honor those that are watching and those that will watch the replay. We pray, Father, that everyone that's hearing this message, Father, will receive what the Holy Spirit desires for them to receive. Their eyes will see, their ears will hear, their heart will receive, and their minds will obey the truth. So we just thank you, Father, that you lead us and guide us by the Holy Spirit into everything, Father, that you have ordained for us. And the Holy Spirit achieves the will of the Father. So let us set our hearts on you, Father. Let us set our hearts on what you have done through Jesus Christ achieved by the Holy Spirit. So we bless you, Father, and we honor you in Jesus' name. So we are a new creation in Jesus Christ. Who is my family? Who is my family? Another word that a lot of people have been using is a buzzword. Who is my tribe? A lot of people have um, said, you need to find your tribe. If you've heard that term, that's the buzzword that a lot of people are using for family. Find your tribe. Find those that you are supposed to run with. Find those that you fit in with. Find those that you have an assignment with. But I want to pose a question on you for you today. Who is your family? Who are the ones that get you? Who are the ones that push the agenda of the Lord? Who are the ones that push you to be the best, best version of who God created you to be? A lot of people are wondering in this hour in such a way that they're looking for that connectivity. They're looking for that place to be empowered, that place to feel that longing or that void fulfilled. But the Lord began to really impress upon me to talk about this today because what the Lord is raising up is apostolic hubs that operate more as a family rather than a quote unquote religious system or a religious structure. Why is that? Because that's how it was supposed to be in the beginning when Jesus started his ministry and his mother and father and his mother and brothers and sisters came while he was doing ministry. And they said, Jesus, your mother and your, your, your siblings are outside and they want to talk to you. And he turned around and posed a question. Who is my mother? Who is my brother? OK, so I want to really um, uh, bring this thing to light today. Type in the comments, I have to find my family. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 through 21 says, so from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, so do we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, listen to this. He is a new creation. A new creation has come. When we step, when we pass, hear me. I hope you share this live. When we pass from death to life, when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal savior, we are supernaturally translated out of darkness, out of our family of origin, our DNA, our academic family into the family of Christ. We step into the family of God through Jesus Christ, who is the second Adam. Before we accepted Christ, we were the lineage of Adam and Eve. But when we accept Christ Jesus, who is the second Adam, the one that came to reset this thing, we become a new class of being. Sherry, how are you saying we are a new class of being? 
because now we are able to house the very nature of Christ Jesus and be empowered and filled with the spirit of God. Before we were aliens, we were strangers, we were foreigners, we weren't connected, we were disconnected from God. But through Christ Jesus, there is a new class of being. Before Jesus Christ, humanity only um, would be able to have the Holy Spirit come upon them for service. But when Jesus Christ came, he came to give humanity an upgrade. Type that in the comments, an upgrade. I am an upgrade. So God upgraded the human uh, being by taking his spirit, the Holy Spirit, putting it inside of man rather than upon man. So man became a new class of being by stepping from death to life and now leaving the edemic nature and stepping into the nature of Christ Jesus. So Christ is our uh, template. Christ is the one that we should pattern ourselves after. Why? Because he was the first born among many brethren. So here it is. When a parent, when parents, when a man and a woman come together and they have a child, that child starts to look like the parent and the father right? Jesus Christ looked like God. He was God in the flesh. So now that Jesus Christ is the firstborn son, what is happening in the realm of the spirit, every child after Jesus is starting to have the same characteristic. Come on, type in the comments. We look the same. Oh, I hope you shared this. I hope you shared it. I hope you shared it. So when a man and a woman come together, they have that child. That child looks like the parents. Come on. But when that parent, when those parents start to have more children, then people will start to say they look like their brother. They have Malachi's eyes. They have Malachi's lips. People start to dif differentiate not only from the mother and father, but they start saying the siblings look the same. Come on. The siblings look the same. The siblings have the same eyes. You look just like your sister. It looks like you guys were our twins. You guys all start to look like one another. And we see this thing in the realm of the spirit. Type in the comments, I see it in the spirit. So he says, when you accept Christ, when you are in Christ as the new uh, creation, you start to look like your brother. Type in the comments, I look like him. So the old nature, your DNA, knowing yourself in the, in the flesh, you're Tootie's daughter, Willis's daughter, you are... Um, Annie's grandchild, I can no longer identify with the carnal. Mm, maybe this is too much for somebody. Come on. Come on. I see it in the spirit. You got to see this thing in the realm of the spirit, not your carnal flesh. So when I accept Christ Jesus, I am translated out of the seed of Adam and I step into a family of God. I'm a new class of being. I leave the carnal realm and I begin to identify with the family of God. The old nature has gone and the new is here. I start to look like my brother. Come on. I look like him. I, I have his character. I have his nature. I have his DNA. All this is from God, verse 18, who reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus and gave us the ministry, come on, of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. 
We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to become sin for us that he that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So here it is. Adam failed. Adam and Eve's insurrection in the garden caused God, which was always in the plan, to send forth his son to be the atoning sacrifice. And in him, we'd be able to experience reconciliation with God. So then we become a brother to Christ or a sister to Christ. And we take on, come on, we take on that same ministry. We take on that same posture of desiring to have others be reconciled to God. We take on his mission. We continue the mission of God to reconcile the world to him. Why am I on Facebook? Because I'm carrying out the appeal. I'm appealing to those who would hear my voice. I'm imploring to those on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. Type in the comments, I'm reconciled. I'm reconciled to him and I have the ministry of reconciliation. What does that mean? Everything that comes out of me is the purpose of what Jesus died for. I carry out and complete his mission through my life. I give my body for the mission of reconciliation. I give my voice. I give my eyes. I give my hands. I give my money to the ministry to reconcile as many as I can back to God. I finish his work. Why? Because I carry out the DNA. I have his DNA. Type in the comments. I have his DNA. I look like my brother. I have a new family. I belong to a new breed of people. I belong to a new class of being. I give him all of me that I may become. This is what the scripture says. Verse 21 for us so that we so that in him, I can't do this thing outside of him. I cannot do this thing in the flesh. I cannot do this thing with a religious mindset. I cannot do this thing with my intellect. I cannot do this thing leading my own way, having my own desires, having my own plan. He says it's in him. So in him, we might become the righteousness of God. It is only in him that we have right standing. It is only in him that we can carry out our ministry. It is only in him that we can move, live, and have our being. Why? Because we are supposed to abide in him. We are supposed to abide in him. The Bible says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, it's not an in and out. Come on. I won't be a double agent. Type in the comments. I won't be a double agent. I won't be somebody abiding today and not tomorrow. I will remain. To abide is to remain. To abide is to stay there. To abide is to have your dwelling place. To abide is to be like him. To abide is to remain in fellowship, remain in contact with him. So we must abide. Type in the comments, I shall abide. So when we are a new, did you share this? Share this live to your networks, to your timeline. Share it to somebody's message. And, 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 and I want to push this message because I feel in my spirit that this is what God is saying today. Even as I woke up this morning and the Holy Spirit began to breathe upon this and begin to just highlight what he wanted to share for today and confirmation after confirmation was given. Yes, daughter, this is what I'm saying. Yes, daughter, this is what I'm heralding in the earth. Yes, daughter, I want my children to come back to my family. I want my children not to be the 
devoted to denominations, to religious systems. I want my children to be devoted to me. Bring my children back to me. Bring my children from idolatry. Bring my children from things that do not push the kingdom agenda through their lives. Bring my children out of being a, 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 a copycats and models. He wants his sons and daughters set free from prison. Type in the comments, set my people free. That's literally what I hear in the realm of the spirit. Set my people free. Come on, share this. Share this to somebody's network. Share this to their timeline. Type in the comments. Get me out of here. Get me out of devotion to religion. Get me out of the systems of man. I want to be connected to him. Connect me to God. Don't tell me I got to do this, that, and the other to be with God. When he says, come on to me, all ye that are labored and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Listen, the Holy Spirit is the one that achieves the will of the Father. Oh my God, I feel the spirit of the Lord on this message. I feel him breathing. I feel him igniting you. I see in your belly, your belly is leaping. The spirit of God is leaping in your belly. It is like rivers coming out of you, out of me into you in the name of Jesus. So we have to learn who we are in God, that we take on a new identity. We cannot receive the things from the natural realm. We cannot regard people in the flesh. This is what he says, Sherry. I need you to stop regarding people in the flesh. I need you to stop looking at your mom, your sisters, your dad, your brother. I took you out of that a long time ago, but you're still deceived thinking that people are supposed to support you because they're your blood. No, if they are not doing the will of the father, if they are not uh, 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 submitted to the will of the father, how can they support you? Because they cannot hear him. Come on, come on. I have a new family. Who is my family? Those who do the will of my father. Now, here it is. It's a plus. It is a, 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 a cherry on top. When you have people in your lives, your family of origin, that do the will of the father. It's a plus. It's a plus to have your sisters, your mother, your father, your brothers or sisters doing what God says do. Committed to the mission of God, right? So what Jesus, okay, so let me back up here. Oh my God. Is, is this good type? It's good to me. Type is good to me. It's blessing me. Don't give me religion in the works. Give me relationship. I have to know him. Type in the comments. I gotta know him. I gotta know him for myself. Get me to Jesus. Get me to Jesus. I need people in my life that will get me to the place of destiny. I need people in my life that are not uh, looking at me from a carnal standpoint. I need people to see in the realm of the spirit who won't regard uh, each other after the flesh, who understand what we have stepped into and out of. You got to understand what you have stepped into and out of. I no longer have an obligation to my family members. I, I no longer have an obligation to my mother and my father. My mission is Jesus's mission. My desire is Jesus's desires. Come on. Come on. I want to complete his mission. So I abide in him. John 15 chapter verses four through 11 says, abide in me and I in you. Come on. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. See, this is where we get messed up. Some people are still holding on to the flesh and trying to walk in the spirit. You can't be a double agent. Come on. 
I won't be a double agent. I won't live in two realms. I'll live in and abide in him. This is where I am. This is who I am now. I'm, I'm different. I have a new family of origin. I have a new class. So what I do, my DNA cannot understand. Come on. So abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Uh, neither can you unless you abide in me. You can't bear fruit for the kingdom of God. The word of God that is sown in your heart cannot bear fruit except you abide in God. You cannot be a double agent. You cannot live committed to the flesh and committed to the spirit. You either love God or love the world. Come on. It, it cannot be both. Come on. Come on. We are to carry out Jesus's mission. And, and a lot of people will say, well, everybody's at a different level. Why are they at a different level? Because we not, have not given them the truth. We have not called them up to a higher realm of thinking. We have not delivered the kingdom of God properly. We have not presented the gospel message properly so people know what they are getting into. My God, I got to know them. I got to be relational, not religious. I got to be family oriented. Not enterprise driven. So he says, unless you abide in me, this is the only way. This is the only way for you to bear fruit. What is that fruit? Unto righteousness, to become righteous. How do I become righteous? By completing the mission that Jesus started. His work was finished that ours can start. Come on. Come on. It's the only way to abide. It's the only way to be. His work was completed so ours could start. So he says, abide in me. Stay in me. Live in me. I am the vine. Stay connected. You are the branches, he says. You are the extensions of me. Come on. It, it, I'm only an extension of him. So because I'm an extension of him, everything that's in him is in me. So I should look like him. I should talk like him. I should act like him. What comes out of me is supposed to be the DNA of Christ. If not, I am a double agent. If not, I don't know the truth. I'm walking in darkness. I'm blind. I'm ignorant of the truth. This is Bible. Type in the comments. This is Bible. And we can try to pacify experiences that we have with leadership, experiences that we have with people. We can try to pacify and brush over it and say, well, they just had a moment. No, we're seeing what was really in you. No, we're seeing God is revealing your heart in the open. Why? So that I'm not blind. The blind will lead those who are blind. Type in the comments, I don't want to be blind. Come on. How do I how do I come out of blindness? I got to abide in him. I got to be righteous. I have to know who I am. Okay, so I am divine. You are the extensions. This is what he's saying. Stop taking on these demonic uh, 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 doctrines. Try Jesus. Don't try me. You can try me. Because what's going to come out is him. Come on. If I'm telling people that, that is already giving a signal. That's already saying you are not, you are a double agent. You are blind. You don't know the truth. You are living beneath your identity. We cannot say, oh, because people are tired of being treated this way. No, that is a persecution of who you are in God. Oh, share, share this. 
This is the kingdom message. This is going to be so good. Type in the comments. If you're feeling like I'm feeling because I feel like the Holy Spirit is just exploding all on the inside of me. This is a timely word. This is a timely message for the body of Christ to come back to family. Whew. So he says, you are an extension of me. He who abides in me and I in him. So I got to be, I got to step into Jesus. And then he comes in me. Mm. He changes my nature. I don't have a natural inclination to cut somebody out in the pulpit. He changes my nature because I step into him and he comes in me. I step out of a DNA, which would help let me cut somebody out on the pulpit. Come on which would tell me to fight because that's my natural inclination. That is the flesh. In the flesh, in the DNA of the flesh, dwelleth no good thing. But when I come out of and I pass from death to life, I step in him and he comes in me. And he comes in me to change my nature. And the more I walk with him, the more he turns on the lights and says, this is who you are. This is how you should be. This is who I am. This is how you should respond to your brother and sister, to your fellow man. And I get things right and I get things in order and I become righteous. Come on. Come on. Oh. Type in the comments. I'm becoming. Okay. Let, let's do this. Type in the comments. Let's do this. Let's do this. Oh my God today. So I am an extension of him. I cannot bring forth fruit for the kingdom of God outside of him, without him. I need God to help me do God. I need God to help me please God. I need God to help me want to do what God wants me to do. I need God to tell me to sow. I need, oh my God. I need God to tell me to partner with a woman of God, a man of God. I need God to help me love my brother. I need God. Why? Because in my DNA dwelleth no good things. So he has to come in me. This was the whole plan of salvation. So when we see people operating as a double agent, we got to open our eyes. We got to see what is this pattern? What is this that I'm seeing displayed in the flesh? <sighs> He says, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. So if I don't abide in him, listen here. This is Bible. Type in the comments. This is Bible. John 15. The 15th chapter of John. It's not Sherry Downs. Verses 4 through 11. If anyone does not remain, remain in him. So what does this mean, remaining in him? As long as I remain in him, I'm pulling from the life source. I'm pulling my responses. I'm pulling my attitude. I'm pulling my disposition. I'm pulling my uh, 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 natural inclinations. I'm pulling my strategies for success, for business, for relationships, for my marriage. Everything flows from the vine. I got to do it the vine's way. Come on. I got to respond to critics. I got to respond to a trolls that may come on my videos in God's way. Not in my flesh. Because I am connected and I abide. Now, does this mean we don't make mistakes? No, it doesn't. But we get those mistakes right in order. We own those mistakes and we get ourselves back connected. So the scripture says, he who abides in me and I in him, bears much fruit for without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does, so we can't do anything without him. So our heart posture is to say, I can't do work without you. I can't parent without you. I can't manage my money without you. Come on, somebody. I can't heal without you. I can't work out without you. Mm. I want to bear fruit in every area of my life. That my life would be righteous and holy. That those that see me see him. 
Why? Because I abide in him. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out. So he says, I'll get rid of you. Oh, I'll cast you out. He's cast out as, a, as an extension of me. If you're a double agent, he no longer considers you as an extension of him. You wither away. You dry up. And they gather them. Come on, somebody. And throw them into the fire. And they are burned. He's saying those that are not abiding in me. And they're doing things without me. Come on. We got to be so careful that we're not doing things without him. That he is leading us. He is guiding us. He is showing us the way. We don't want to do anything in ministry. We don't want to do business. We want to do the thing that he is breathing on. Achieved only by the Holy Spirit. He says, you're burned into the fire. I cast you out. I cut you off from the life source. You're not worthy to be connected to me. Because you're not bearing fruit. So there is a frustration in the realm of the spirit because what is connected must bear fruit. If it doesn't bear fruit, it frustrates the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit's job is to achieve the will of the Father. He is the power behind the Trinity. He is the one that achieves God's will through man. Come on. Come on. Let me take you back to the scene in the gospels when God began to speak to Mary through the angel. He says, you're going to give birth, Mary. You're connected to the vine, Mary, and you're about to bear fruit unto righteousness, Mary. The Holy Ghost is going to achieve what you cannot achieve. The Holy Ghost is the one that's going to overpower you and overshadow you to bring forth fruit. Mm to bring forth Christ. So it's the Holy Spirit that achieves the will of the Father. The Holy Spirit sanctifies the believer. The Holy Spirit br brings the believer to the place of realization. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. But we have to abide. Oh. If you abide in me, he says in verse seven, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Now, is this a blank check that God has given humanity? Is this something that God has given humanity and saying whatever your wish is, is my command? No, when you abide in him, he already told us you're finishing the work of Christ. You are given a ministry or a mission of reconciliation. When you abide in him, listen, you don't want things outside of him because he, he already told us earlier in this verse, we can do nothing without him. So when we have him, the things that we are, we ask for will be in accordance to the mission. Mm. The things that we ask for will be accordance to the will of the father. The things that we ask for will be uh, 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 in tandem with what the Holy Spirit desires to achieve. Now, will he grant us the desires of our heart. He said, yes, I'll give them to you. I'll give you what to desire according to your uh, uh, assignment on earth, according to what I want to accomplish through your life. I'll give you what you need to desire. So if I want to lift you up to the degree that everybody knows that I am Lord, I am God, I'll give you five mansions. I'll give you a jet because I want people to see that nobody could do that work in your life but God. So whatever you ask for, because we have to petition him for his will, we have to manifest his will out of the realm of the spirit and speak it forth into the earth. We have to voice activate what his will is. 
So he'll reveal supernaturally what his will is and prophetically by the way of prophets or prayer, we will begin to ask for it. Why? Because we need to desire it because he does not invade our life without our permission. The Holy Spirit works with us in partnership and in fellowship to achieve God's will. To achieve what? The mission of Jesus Christ. We're finishing his mission. What he started. We're extensions. So that's why we can ask for what we will. Because it's in tandem with the mission. You asking for healing? How does that help the mission? You're asking for money. How does that help the mission? What has God told you about the mission? You're asking for a husband. How does that help the mission? What has God told you about that? He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. Now, what words? The logos, the written word, and the prophetic words I've given you. We already know about the sower. And the seed, the only way that the word can abide in you is if you have good ground in your heart. Mm, my God, the sower and the seed, some fell on stony ground. <laughs> Come on. Some fell on shallow ground and they sprang up, but they had no depth. They had no root to keep them. But the good ground of the heart, those different grounds was talking about the ground of the heart. So only way that the words can abide in me. David said, thy words have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you, that I might not stray away, that I might not miss the mark, that I might not fail and not do your will. So David began to hide those words. David began to cover up those words. David began to allow those words to go deep into his heart. So I won't miss the mark. And when I stray, the Holy Spirit is able to bring that word back to me and convict me and get me right back in alignment with the vine. By this, verse eight says, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. You will be those that learn of me. You will be those that abide in me. This is, this is what the, this is Bible. This is not Sherry Downs. This is what the word says. It's possible to live in him. Come on. It's possible when you know who you are, when you carry a heart after him. David was a man after God's heart. A man that wanted to please God. A man that wanted to capture the heart of God. A man that repented before God and owned his stuff. Today, we only own our stuff to keep our ministry afloat. We only own our stuff. When we're about to be canceled, when the world is dragging our name, that's when we get on and apologize. Oh, Jesus, help this culture today. But if you're not in the light, if you're not abiding in him, what will happen? You'll follow the blind. You'll follow those that are not displaying kingdom characteristics that look like Jesus. They'll say, I'm gonna lay my religion down. That's a double agent. The scripture says you gotta abide in him. This is, what this, this is what the word says. Now we living up to the word. The word didn't give an exception. He didn't say when your house is under attack. He didn't say when your marriage is threatened. Come on. He said, abide in him, bear fruit, look like me. When this doesn't happen, he cuts you off from the life source. Now here's the thing. At one time, the branch was connected. But because it did not bear fruit, because the word that I placed in their heart did not become fruitful, I had to cut them off. So he says this, because you are connected, here, here it is. 
Because you abide in me, because you are a new creation, because you have a new identity, because you allowed me to take you out of that DNA and into the kingdom of God. Now, here is the, the, the cherry on top of coming out of darkness into light is if God brings your whole family. If God brings your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your nieces, your aunties, your cousins, that's a blessing because not everybody has that. Then you are, a, uh, then you will be a family of a kingdom movement because everybody in your home has the same mission and ministry, the same agenda, the same understanding, because if you are not a person that is on the mission of God. You can be a doorway where the enemy comes against the mission. The enemy comes against the ministry. <sighs> so we have fellowship with God and with the saints. Here it is. Who is my family? Type in the comments. Let's, let's answer that question. Who is my family? Who is my family? Who's my tribe? So the word fellowship, type fellowship. Type in the comments, fellowship. Type fellowship. Type fellowship. Type fellowship type fellowship so fellowship with god and with the saints the word fellowship mm, my god is a friendly association especially with people who share one's interest are y'all getting this Type in the comments, I get it, I receive it. I get it, I receive it. I get it, I receive it. Share this video. Share it to your timelines. Share it to your networks. The body of Christ needs to hear this message. Fellowship is friendly association, especially with people who share one's interests. What is your interest? What is your interest? What, what? Are you committed to? What are you committed to? What's your interest? What are you associating with? What companionship do you have? What intimacy do you have? Fellowship is companionship, intimacy, association, togetherness, solidarity. What is your interest? What, is, what motivates you? What is your mission in life? What are you committed to do in this life? What destiny do you want to achieve? What legacy do you want to leave? What do you stand for? What are your principles? What are your core values? What are your motives? G John, in 1 John chapter 1, he talks about the incarnation of the word of life. That is Jesus Christ. He says in 1 John, 1 John chapter 1, that which was from the beginning. That which we have heard, that which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. This ain't something, John starts off saying, this is not something that I'm telling you by secondhand knowledge. Now, a lot of people are preaching the word, preaching the gospel, preaching about Jesus, and they don't know him. They haven't seen him. They haven't heard him. They haven't experienced him. But John starts out saying, I'm validating this experience because I seen it, I heard it, and I touched it. It's a reality for me. This is, this is not secondhand knowledge. This is not religious jargon. This is not something that I'm trying to tell you and convince you of that I have not experienced. You guys have ever played that game Telephone? Where as the message gets passed to one person after another, the message is lost in translation. When you don't have experience with God, that's literally what's happening. That message is getting lost in translation 
because it's not something that I originally experienced for myself from the one that gave the message. Jesus. Jesus. He says, I touched it with my hands. I touched the life source. I touched what came from the father. Not only that, I experienced the supernatural. I experienced something that must have come from a heavenly place. I experienced something that wasn't human. I knew him once in the flesh. I started out knowing him in the flesh. Ugh. Now, now, now here's the thing. Some of us started out knowing him in the flesh, but he brought us into a closer realm of being, into the realm of the spirit. We started out knowing him through religion. But when we took his yoke upon him and began to journey with him to know him, he says we started out knowing him by Jesus Christ of Nazareth in the flesh. But that knowledge became real because I touched him. Mm. Type in the comments, I got to know him. He said, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. He called Jesus the word of life, the, the life in the flesh. The life appeared. We have seen it. He says, we, and we testify. We place our witness on it. We're going to the grave with this claim. I'm going to the grave saying I knew him. I'm going to the grave saying I experienced his fellowship. I'm going to the grave saying I fellowshiped with the father through the son by the Holy Spirit. And we proclaim to you that are listening. He says that we'll re read this message. The eternal life, which was with the father and has appeared to us. Now, when Jesus came back and manifested himself, John also saw him in the Mount of Transfiguration. John, so John knew of his supernatural presence, his supernatural ability. And when he came back and resurrected, that was another confirmation of who he was, of who he is, of his divine nature, of the eternal life. They saw him die. They testified that he rose so we will rise. He's the firstborn among many brethren. Now, 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 I've, I've never been in a court case. I've never been a called that I can remember on a witness stand to testify for a case for somebody. But one thing I know about witnesses and testimonies, the, the case is judged based upon eyewitness. Mm. Are you an eyewitness for Christ? Come on. Are you an eyewitness? Did you share this, if you're not an eyewitness, you can't say I experienced him. I know he's real. The things that happen in my life are only supernatural. I have supernatural experiences with him. He has carried me. He has walked with me. I have walked with him. I have fellowship with him. I have association with him. My interest is to complete Jesus's mission. I have intimacy with him. I have togetherness with the saints and solidarity with my family. When God tells me to push a mission, I obey him. When God tells me to go give somebody groceries, I obey him. When God tells me to sow a seed, I obey him. When God tells me to show love, I obey him. When God tells me to give that person grace, I obey him. Come on, that's fellowship. When God tells me to close my mouth, I close it. I obey him. I have friendly association with God and my brothers and my sisters. So he says, the life appeared. We have seen it and we testify to it. Open court. We test, we put this on the books. I'll go to my grave as one that is for this message. 
I'll, I'll let it be in the court documents. If I look crazy because of my testimony, I let it be known going in, into history, into the courts of heaven. I'm testifying that he is real. I'm testifying that you have to have a relationship with him. I'm testifying that I have been connected. I have experienced him. I have seen him. I've seen his delivering power. I've seen his hand of healing. I've experienced his hand of encouragement. I experienced his hand of friendship. I experienced his hand of fellowship. I experienced his hand of restoration. I experience his saving grace. I experience his mercy to bring me out of darkness, to bring me out of a broken state, to bring me out of idolatry, to bring me out of adultery, to bring me out of sickness and disease, to bring me out of brokenness, to bring me out of disparity, to bring me out of self-harm and self-hate. I have fellowship. He's showing me who he is. He's bringing me to a new family. If my family won't come with his agenda, he's giving me a family of origin. Stop crying because your family of your DNA can't understand you, can't understand your process. You had to be broken to be brought in. Jesus, 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 Jesus. He has need of you. He wants to connect you. He wants to give you a mission. He wants to give you a purpose. He wants to give you a meaning. He wants to give you an agenda. He wants to tell you the meaning of life. He wants to give you his life source. He's connecting you to a family that will embrace you, that will push you, that will say, come on, that's okay. That's okay you got hurt. That's okay the enemy got you. That's okay you were deceived. Let's get you to God. Let's get you to a family. Let's connect you to the vine. Let's bring out the gifts. Let's let the life source come through you and let you be an extension of the family of God. Let's give you fellowship. Whew. So John says the life appeared. He was manifested. We saw it. And we, we go to the grave with this message and we proclaim to you eternal life. Now we're proclaiming to you why, why this, why he came. So that you can have eternal life because we've seen it for ourselves, which was with the father and has appeared to us. This experience we've had has been a supernatural experience. This experience that we had, John says, it's been a life altering experience. It's been nothing that the father hasn't done. Whew. We proclaim to you. What we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. He's saying, we know him. We experience him. Now, come on, join in this fellowship. That's what we're supposed to be doing. What John is saying. I know him for myself. Come join me. Come worship with me. Come to Deerfield, to women of weight. Come see for yourself. Come experience him through the extensions of him. Whew. Our fellowship is with the father and with the son, Jesus Christ. I can no longer regard, I can't regard myself after the flesh. I, I will not regard myself after my DNA. I have no obligation to my family of origin. Let it be known. Ha! <laughs> You got to openly confess that thing. Whoo! My mission is to complete the mission of Christ. My agenda is to fulfill the assignment achieved through the Holy Spirit. I go where he say go. I do what he says do. I say what it, I'll say what he tells me to say. Let it be known. You better let it be known. I'm no longer obligated to my brothers and sisters. I'm no longer obligated. I'm no longer regarding the flesh. It is who is doing the will of my father. That's who I have fellowship with. Those that push his agenda. If you are in a, 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 a double agent mode, I can't do nothing with you. If you're trying to live in one way and live in another way, I can't do nothing with you. 
I love you. I hope you get it. I hope you come along. Come alongside the agenda. This is Bible. This is what the word says. We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. He's saying, I want you to have fellowship with us. I want you to have a common interest with us. I want you to come alongside God's agenda. I want you to want to finish the work of God. I want you to put everything you have on him. I want you to bet on him. I want your whole life to be devoted to the mission to finish what he started. That's fellowship. That's fellowship. I'm giving my life, my talents, and my treasures to finish this mission. When we don't understand what we are in and the seriousness of the kingdom of God, we'll live as double agents. We'll live devoted to organizations, pastors, leaders, people, but not God. We'll look to man rather than look to God. We'll look to man to give us any okay rather than uh, looking to God. God says, I'll give you the okay. And I'll connect you with people that will understand you in the spirit. So he says, we write this to make our joy complete. So he says he's writing this to fulfill a joy. When you're doing the will of God, it is a joy. When you're completing the assignment of heaven, it is a joy. When you obey the Holy Spirit, it is joy. When you are with a family of origin in the realm of the spirit, you experience joy. You experience the joy of fellowship, the joy of ministry, the joy of serving. You serve with joy. You give your money with joy because you have a different perspective. You're doing it as unto the Lord. You know your part that you're playing. Who is my family? So he says, regard no man after the flesh. This is verse, uh, this is Matthew 12, 46 through 50. While yet he talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brother stood without desiring to speak with them. Then one said unto him, behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that, told him who is my mother and who is my brethren and he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said behold my mother and my brethren for whosoever shall do the will of my father which is in heaven the same is my mother my brother my sister those are the same this is no no uh uh separation but what jesus was also pointing out here is i've i've stepped into a realm of spiritual life i know who i am in him i know what i have to do i my mission has started my assignment is here those who do god's will i have a new family I have an extended family now remember i said if your natural family comes alongside the mission that's an additive that's the cherry on top. But that's not always so. Anybody that detours you from doing God's will, whether they live in as a double agent or whether they are not of God. If we fight against his will, we are double agents. If we regard people after the flesh and not after the spirit, we miss God's agenda. We miss partnering with the kingdom. Type in the comments, I don't want to miss God. Matthew chapter 10, verse 35 through 38. For I have come, Jesus says, to turn man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me, Jesus says is not worthy he ain't worthy of me anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me
whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. What is he saying? When you accept Christ Jesus, you are a new class of being. You have a new family of God. You pass from death to life. You take on God's mission and you complete the assignment of Jesus. Pray for your family members. Pray for your husband, your children, that their eyes are enlightened and they serve God's agenda and not religion, not man. That they too become obligated to the voice of God, to the mission of the kingdom, that they become branches that abide in God, that they do not live as double agents. Pray heaven down. That's why I wrote this book because the enemy will try to bully you when you're trying to follow God. He'll try to cause disease to happen. He'll try to cause uproars in your family. And you have to come through that warfare. You have to come through that agenda of the enemy to keep you subservient to the flesh. You have to cause spiritual warfare to take place to break through those chains that will try to hold you captive to your DNA, that will try to hold you captive to the flesh that will try to hold you captive in religious prisons, institutions, obligation to man, man's words, fear of man. God wants to break you off of that. He wants you to go into spiritual warfare and begin to pray for your family, begin to pray the kingdom agenda begun to have an unprecedented power in prayer where your husband comes out of pornography, where your children come off the street, where your daughter gets off drugs. He wants your marriage to be done like he has ordained, like the father, the son and the spirit moving as one. He wants to set you free so that you are free to serve him in righteousness. Your whole family is a kingdom movement and a kingdom agenda. But until he does that, he says, daughter, son, you have a new family. Connect to your tribe. Connect to those that I am partnering you with. Open your eyes and see those who are blind. Do not follow blind leaders. Set your heart upon my agenda. Remain in me. Have a relationship with me. Come on. Let me help you get to the father. Let me help you stand on your own two feet. Let me help you pull out those gifts, those talents, those abilities that he has placed on the inside of you. Breaking off all of that ungodly religious stuff you've learned. Jesus. Obligation to man. Obligation to the flesh, obligation to our family members of origin. God wants to break that off of you. Come on, type in the comments. Break it off, God. Help my heart to be devoted to your interests. Help my heart to serve you, God. Help my heart to be devoted to what you are telling me to devote to be devoted to my resources to go what you are telling me to go towards what you are telling me to help build what you are telling me to be a part of that. I don't have to be a part of this church because my whole family was there. I don't have to do that job because my whole family did it. I don't have to go to school because my whole family did it. I don't have to go this way because my whole family did it. Break it off God and bring me into the family of God. Who is my family? Them that do the will of my father. Them that look like my brother. Look like my brother in nature. Look my, like my brother in spirit, in kindness, in meekness, in gentleness, in patience, in love, in joy, in long suffering. They look like him. Type in the comments. I want to look like him. I want to have his DNA. Jesus Christ is the firstborn among many brothers. What does that mean? I have to die to that carnal nature. I have to die to responding in the flesh. I have to die to responding, wanting to cuss people out, wanting to get revenge, wanting to be uh, uh, dece deceivious. 
Lord, work with me. Type in the comments, Holy Spirit, work with me. Don't let me frustrate you. I don't want to frustrate the Holy Spirit who achieves God's will in my life. I don't want to fight his agenda, which is to finish the mission through me, that I might become an ambassador to Christ Jesus, that I might finish out his mission that he started. Oh, Jesus. I feel the weight of God. Woo! I feel the weight of God on this message. Share it. I feel the weight of God on this message. I feel the weight of God. Father, work with us. Father, move us to the place of empowerment. Move us to the place of serving you. Move us to the place of becoming ambassadors, that we move with your agenda, that we move with your way, that we move in your kindness, that we move in the kingdom agenda and the kingdom mandate and the kingdom purpose. Uh, um, Holy Spirit, have full reign. Come on, tell Holy Spirit, have full reign. Have full reign in my life. Have full reign in my finances. Have full reign in my business. Have full reign in ministry. Have full reign, Holy Spirit, to where when I look crazy, I'll do it. To where when I look different, I'll serve you. I'll go. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll connect with whoever you want me to connect. I'll break away from those uh, 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 fleshly connections for what you want me to do. I'll follow you. I'll pick up that cross. That's a cross. A lot of people don't want to pick it up. Jesus, Woo! a lot of people don't want to pick that cross up and follow him. But what you can do, because we are supposed to pray, we are supposed to intercede for our family members that they too become believers that they too have their eyes open to truth, that they too hear the message of salvation and connect to Christ Jesus. But until then, it's okay. Because I have a family. I have a tribe. If you feel empowered to sow into this message, to push the kingdom agenda, what God has given me to do, I, I pray that you would sow a seed into this kingdom movement that God is doing. I pray that you would come to Hyatt Deerfield. Why, why am I asking for that? Because I can't do what I do without support. The kingdom movement is free, but the internet, to live, to host events, all of that cost. He has called me to the kingdom for such a time as this, those that are a part of my team, those that are sowing already, we already have partners that sow with us for the kingdom movement, but to do bigger things, we need as many of the family of God to come, to come join what God is doing, what he is birthing, what he is saying. There's movements that are popping up everywhere. There are people that have this message in their heart that God is calling the body of Christ back to his family, back to devotion to him. Out of places where people are making others copycats of themselves. God wants you who, just as you are, original. He wants you to do your mission and your assignment, how you do it. He wants to take who you are and use you for his glory. It's so beautiful how God created humanity. We're all different and it's no different in the body of Christ. But people shun what does not fit their mold, what does not fit their pattern. But I say, come, come. You're welcome to join our coaching and mentoring program. You're welcome to join us in Deerfield, Illinois. 
Go to my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com. I love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you for staying on here with me. Thank you for watching the replay. I pray that this blessed you. Share this message to somebody that you know has been feeling this same urgency, this same call, this same message burning in their spirit that they want to do what God has commissioned them to do. I love you with the love of the Lord. I pray that this bless you. I pray you are inspired and edified and the Holy Spirit begin to ignite you in this message because truly he blew upon this message. I love you with the love of the Lord and I love you with my love. Be blessed.